Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Creative Process Podcast. Today, episode 80 on this beautiful, I guess we're recording on a Tuesday. Um, wait, is it Tuesday? It is Tuesday. 23rd is a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> they start molding together every once in a while. They do. It, yeah. We kind of talked about, about this before, but the busy weeks just kind of let the days just roll, you know? Um, but obviously by the title, you guys know who's on, whether you know him or not, you know, the name of him, Connor Henkel, last name, correct? Yeah. Sounds correct to me. Henkel. Awesome. Um, first off, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you for taking the time out of your day. Um, and I mainly wanted to have you on because one, your work is fantastic. Um, you do a great job at, um, delivering your work in an, in an awesome in an awesome way. Um, obviously for Oregon, but also the people that you that you work for. But also on social, you do a great job of. Um, I think you do a great job of breaking down your systems and um, showing showing people how you do what you do, and that's that's awesome. Um, being able to to show that side of things is is fantastic. So I just wanted to kind of hand it to you, <laughs> hand the compliments over to you um, before yeah, we I kind of. It. <laughs> no problem, man. Before we uh, before we get started here, um, but if you don't mind, introduce yourself to the people. Tell you uh, tell the people who you are. You know wherever you're from. It's it's basically up to you how deep you want to go. For sure, yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you for your time, Jared, and I, I'm flattered to be on this and to have a conversation with you. So I appreciate that. But yeah, I'm uh, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm Connor Hinkle. I do motion graphics. Um, so I'm doing like freelance motion graphics now, but yeah, it's graphics for social and uh, in venue video boards, typically like packages for, for teams and events and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, pretty much like any motion related thing. I just, I just love the industry. It's super creative and there's a lot of cool people in it. So it's just kind of a fun space to be in, you know, I just, I just love it. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like I said a little bit earlier, um, in your little, um, in the intro I kind of gave to you, I guess I kind of introduced maybe half, but, um, but yeah, I was very, like, I'm very intrigued. I don't know when I started following you or when I, you know, when we kind of connected, um, but you know, seeing your work, um, I think last season, last football season, last college football season, I like saw your work and saw the work you were doing for Oregon. Um, and you know, everything on that side of things was a super unique side of the whole social graphic aspect of things. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, where did you, like, where did you get your start in like motion graphics? Did you start in static or? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, so it's, I'm like thinking back, honestly, how I did all start, <laughs> but uh, I had a few, like, I had some background in design. Like I did yearbook in high school, um, had a sports and athletic background um, you know, some graphic design there. And then kind of, as I went to college, I was like, all right, like, what do I want to do? The classic, like the COVID, like it, like the moment where you just are thinking like, okay, what do I actually want to do? Where right. it's like a, a pause in time <laughs> and reevaluate everything. And, um, I was just really interested in photography and videography at the time and, and graphic design and was like kind of doing all of those things and got a job to the university actually just being a, um, a graphic designer originally, but then switched over to be more photo and video and like broadcasting side. Um, and it was around that same time where I was starting to discover what like motion design was. I had like no idea, like it's still kind of a niche little area, but mm -hmm. um, I was like, well, this is like kind of like perfect. It combines all my uh, my passions with like sports, graphic design, uh, you know, photography, videography, and a little bit of like um, sound effects, editing and video editing. So. I just kind of stumbled into it. I had a really good buddy, Mark Nelson. I don't know if you know who he is, but he was um, he was an Oregon grad. He was a senior when I was a freshman, and I met him playing ping pong in one of the freshman uh, <laughs> living dorms, and just completely random. Like before I even knew what motion design was, before I knew what GoDucks was, uh, I just met the guy, and he's like to this day one like a super good buddy of mine, and we like chat all the time. He'd be actually great to have on this show because he went to ESPN and then kind of is doing. Um, he's out of the sp uh, uh, like sports media realm, but he's doing something similar still. But mm -hmm. he'd be a good person to have on for sure. Um, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll ask you for his for his ad after we get done recording. For sure, you totally should. But mm -hmm. long story short, he was in emotion design already, kind of like doing similar stuff to what I um, did or do. And um, I'm like, this is pretty cool. So over COVID, just 
you know, YouTube University just looked up as many <laughs> tutorials as possible. Like, I, I guarantee I've seen like every single YouTube tutorial online and I, I love it. And it's like <laughs> all the information's out there. So um, I could just kind of learn it as quick as possible. So that's kind of like the long story um, of how I stumbled uh, upon it. And just, yeah, I'm here where I am. I still have a lot of like goals I have for myself, but um, we're just taking it day by day out here, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, did you graduate college or have you graduated college? Um, so I have not. I'm actually graduating in June here. Um, so, so pretty soon. Yeah, so pretty soon here. I feel like we graduate because I spend like very little time on schoolwork and most of the time like doing like design related stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, technically still a student here at UL. So is your major design or is it a different major? Um, so my major is a bachelor, bachelor of arts. Um, and the, like a minor in business but um i just tell people like i study animation because it's like i take a lot of animation classes but okay as as good as i think a, of a school organ is i don't wouldn't um credit um like any expertise i've learned for like the classroom or in the classroom i guess everything mm -hmm. i've learned is it's definitely been from youtube and i actually like i think that's a good thing because then other people can understand that oh i don't need to go to like a big school or like a well-known school to to, mm -hmm. to learn a skill i would say it's important for like leveraging your skill to a bigger audience immediately but um that was just a value i saw in going to a bigger school with big sports it was kind of like an idea in the back of my mind but mm -hmm. um yeah all the information's out there for free on youtube to learn how to do like cool skills and like if it isn't just motion design it could be like i don't know cooking like I, there's just so much information out there so for free uh, so it's up for grabs but yeah there's another one everyone there's another one we talk about this topic all the time on the podcast it's uh do you need to go to college to mm. be in design yeah i definitely have my own thoughts about that <laughs> have you did you have thoughts of dropping out because i did oh for sure yeah you know like that was a huge thought like especially in the middle of covid it's like all right like I went to college for the social part of it. Like that's a huge value and like making friends and meeting people mm -hmm. future, like, you know, people that would be at your wedding or business partners are just like, I don't know, college, you know, and it completely negated that whole fact. And it was zoom university for a while. And I was like, all right, like, what are we, what are we doing here? I'm kind of like ready to start now. Like it just kind of canceled, um, like the, the hype surrounding college. Um, but I don't think, yeah, it's definitely not necessary and it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a big like melting pot of opportunity and you kind of make, um, what you want of it. And I, I don't really know what the small school experience is like, so I can't really speak to that, but I can speak to like a medium sized school like Oregon is like, but I thought it was worth it for me, but maybe not worth for, for everybody for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The social aspect of college, I think. It's tough, you know, it's tough. If you're from if you're from a, if you're from a bigger city, then going to college for the social aspect of things may not, you know, it's not super needed. Um for mm -hmm. myself, I'm I was from a small town, it's like town of 20,000. Um went to college in a town of I think the surrounding areas and everything totaled about 40,000. So mm -hmm. um but, you know, going to the going to college, I mean, I have some of my best friends that I got from college, you know. So it's mm -hmm. like that whole aspect of things, you know, the curriculum and the content that I was learning may not have been to the, yeah. to the expectation that I thought it was going to be, but you know, the relationships and the friendships that I got out of it are, are definitely worth the time for sure. Um, yeah, I was like, I was like, let's see, when did, did COVID happen? Like sophomore, wait, no, I graduated in 20, 2021, May of 21. So well, I, mm -hmm. I think I'm two years out after you. So I think okay. like my sophomore semester, like first semester after that, I started thinking about dropping out. Like I've had, mm -hmm. I had, I had a lot of conversations with my parents and, um, with my wife now, um, girlfriend back then, um, about the whole scenario. And she's like, look, you're like, you're like almost halfway done. Just, just yeah. do it, you know, just do it. Yeah. You know, as much as, as much as like the piece of paper really didn't mean much it, you know, in the job world at the moment, it makes a big difference. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. Is, yeah, was that because like you, you thought you knew what you already wanted to do and you already, already had a plan or you just kind of so, tired of whatever it was? Well, yeah, I kind of had, I was like similar to you, like 
like I wanted to just go. I wanted to just get out. Like I knew where I wanted to go. Like I knew I wanted to work in sports. I knew I wanted to, you know, I knew I wanted to just end up where I want, where I am like now, like my Mm -hmm. career is right now. That's where I wanted to go. So it was like, I kind of had that made up in my mind before I went to college, but I went to college because of the power of the power of the, you know, bachelor's degree in corporate America. And if you're, Mm -hmm. if you want to work within sports on an employment side of things, it's like, you know, you kind of need the the sheet of paper to, to, yeah, Mm -hmm. it it just kind of sucks. But now, um, by now, by now, let's see, this will be episode 80. We're recording this a while before it's going out. So in episode 79, I think with, with Xavier, um, I'll give you a little nugget counter before it goes out. Um, we talked about, we talked about, so he worked with the, ML, he works with the MLB, right? He was a creative director. He was hiring someone and he asked HR, he's like, Hey, can we take out the college degree requirement for this? He said like he was, it was kind of flatlining when it was coming to like getting applications and he took that requirement out and he got like 300 applications in like two days. <laughs> it's like, and he yeah. said, he said like some of the most talented people, like he oh, see, like applied to it. And it's like the amount of like, I don't know what your, your opinion is, but like our, our industry and like when it comes to design and digital design, it, it's like, it's so dependent on the product that we produce right Mm -hmm. like who cares if we don't know color theory or fucking the gestalt principles of design like if we produce a good product and know why we produced a good product it's like that's kind of what it speaks for like if Mm -hmm. your portfolio is good it's good you know (laughs) i I don't know what else i agree more yeah i mean it's a formality set into place by old standards but i think everyone knows now like with the, the decentralization of education i guess like that's what you could say it's so accessible to anybody and mm-hmm. almost like in my opinion um like a better indicator if you don't go to the college because then like in that sense for like that industry like there's a there's an argument to be made there because right. then it shows um it shows you that you know maybe they they knew it was a waste of money and didn't want to spend any time doing something that was like technically a waste of money for a formality that is uh in most cases in this industry outdated you know mm-hmm. right um but yeah, i mean yeah the it's I, I feel like it eventually be phased out once like people our age will become in positions of power to like actually phase something like that out and we're mm-hmm. beginning to see that um but i mean there's still there's still power in the university for sure but it's definitely not what it used to be mm-hmm. for sure you know the funniest part is when i see like freelancers you know constantly get hired out to to big corporate you know companies and mm-hmm. you know it's like yeah, it, it, all in all, it's like money talks, right? Money talks. If a person, like in the end, like for a corporate organization, if a person has a degree, you're going to have to pay them more, right? So if you can just freelance, like if you can just find freelancers and outsource that type of thing, why are you even going after employees like with a degree? Mm-hmm. Like why are you making that a requirement? Yeah. You know, if you're still the depending goal. on people to get the job done, that may not have a degree, you know, you're, it's, it's like, why not, why not want to hire someone full time that doesn't have a degree, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I can agree more. I, the degree does like maybe say a few things about somebody in terms of their ability to stick through, like, yeah. I've seen lots of BS <laughs> or <laughs> their idea of, like, um, like socialism, I, like not by, not in terms of like the yeah. framework of <laughs> socialism um but like how social someone is and like i there's like there's other like benefits of it too like working underneath a bigger brand and understanding like brand design style guides and mm-hmm. and you know, leveraging like strategy like there's a lot of good things to be said for it but yeah i mean i, I think you and me are on the same page about that for sure mm-hmm. yeah so kind of segueing into your work and what you do um when you like when when you were working with is it UO? It's not OU. Mm-hmm. OU is Oklahoma, right? That's Oklahoma, yeah. <laughs> UO. We're, we're UO here. Okay, so UO. When you're working with UO, um, are you are you going to be working with them next this coming season? Um, potentially. Um, we're we're kind of talking about like, are you talking about full time or are you just talking about like? Well, just 
nice. well because like yeah, it's, it's whether i want to reference it like while you were working or you know when you're working you know rather than referencing it past tense you know more present tense i just want to make Got sure it. okay yeah. well yeah i'm technically in like internship standing with them now i don't really treat it as that because it's honestly not really like that it's more of like working together and being like i guess a contractor more okay um like independent but i mean i still like work with uh, um, other creative interns here I still we still have meetings like um, nearly every week and I like love that group and they're they're great and I love doing like creative stuff and having good conversations with them so I'm still mm-hmm. like involved okay. for sure and, and I love that part of it and I'm like sad to like give that up once I graduate for sure but um, like uh, w- w- when I graduate then it'll probably become a more like professional relationship but I mean I already know right the people like in the facilities and we're good friends and hopefully we can keep some stuff going right um where i i can't really speak much to like what's going on behind like the scenes but it definitely like i i would hope that we would be able to continue to do some cool stuff and um and yeah not only for them but for like other teams as well i kind of mm-hmm. want to branch out and start you know expanding from here and exercising my like motion creativity with other brands and everything that's, that's kind of mm-hmm. a long-term goal you know mm-hmm yeah so i guess yeah i guess that that allowed me to be able to phrase this correctly for myself without Mm -hmm. my brain working in the background um so like when it when it came to sports design when you were looking at developing you know some creative aspects for um for the content last season right i'll just say that last Mm -hmm. season um the implementation of like motion into static is something that isn't seen that much within the sports industry um, and especially within college football and college athletics, um, when you were in that process, were you considering that or were you just like, Hey, I have an idea. Let's just kind of go for it type of mm-hmm. scenario. Um, yeah, I, I would say it was more of like an analytical approach, almost treated it like a case study, like the game day piece as a, as a case study throughout the course of the year. And we'll use it as a, uh, like a measurement or like to gauge what what it would look like to switch up our strategy and incorporate some more like motion in this and typically static content or pieces and mm-hmm. um it was kind of a mix between case study and my interests and we were just tired of doing like what we were always used to doing we wanted to switch it up a little bit and plus it was a good like kind of routine for me to get into every week kind of have another creative challenge like a different photo shoot okay what's the idea that goes with this could we like integrate the jersey color could we like do it in a different scene? Like how do we like join all of these things in a cool way that's like eye catching. So um, it was, yeah, I, w- I would boil it down to like a case study throughout the course of the year, th- like via game day motion graphics. Um, but I mean, it just sort of unfolded itself into kind of a style that I guess they're they're known for, but I'm not, I don't know. I think it's, it's gonna pick up steam and motion is gonna be more incorporated into like r- routine, like uh deliverables Mm -hmm. in terms of what things are pushing out and everything so yeah so what did you find out from the case study were were you like measuring analytics or yeah we measured we took analytics before and after and everything and there is a like a substantial like change um of like engagement and of course like the whole virality factor yeah Um, (laughs) and i think like yeah it just it was interesting to see because like if something increases engagement like sometimes it's almost not still not worth it to put in the extra work like the engagement or like the increased interaction like should be have like multiples on the, like, the increased effort too mm-hmm. and it can't just be like a one-to-one thing or else you're just like spending intern energy like for what you know so it's more i mean it's more for myself like of course i want to see oregon do good and i have like a connection to oregon but um, I mean, I would be lying if it said if I said it, I wasn't like doing it for like internal exploration too to see like how far could I push this and right. where could I take my creativity each week. Right. Um, but I mean, really, when you're when you're pushing out graphics, you're trying to please donors, you're trying to please fans, and you're trying to please um, potential like players for recruiting. Right. So there's there's tangible things that you're trying to reach, and that's the effort every time is to not just make cool stuff like why are you making cool stuff you know get to the next level that is there a purpose behind this this graphic or design or motion piece or video what 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 are we trying to communicate we're all just kind of upholding brands and like maintaining brand integrity essentially because the brands have all always been solidified for 
you know, the past, like since the dawn of yeah, the, years the, and years. So, yeah. So we're just upholding something or trying to push it a little bit further. But I mean, if we can reach a new recruit and the recruit can be like, I mean, that was, that was cool. Like I kind of want to go to that school and have some motion graphics made of me. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we, if we change one person's mind and they end up coming to the school and then they do good for us and we make it to a bowl game because of them. I mean, that's like the returns on that are crazy. So there, there's always intention behind like what you do, or at least there should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's fun just being more analytical rather than just like the creative side of it. Cause mm-hmm. um, the power it comes in the unity of those two things for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have so guys, sorry, sorry. Did you have guys like reaching out to you wanting to be the main focal on that, on those game day graphics? <laughs> like from our team? Yeah. Like, did you have dudes um, like, Hey, actually, I, no, I, like, I saw, I saw that dude was in it last week. Can I be in it this week? <laughs> I definitely, like after the first few players would get hyped to like, have their own like graphic made right. but they never reached out to me personally i just kind of heard through the grapevine like oh this is kind of a thing and it, it started happening for the end of last year to where I, I knew like oh this could be like something cool to continue into next year <laughs> um i think it was after like the person stepping into the stadium they're like oh man like um this is this is pretty cool like let's keep this going and i kind of have a funny story about that too to like that started off the season of like the motion graphics they kind of they essentially I just felt like I was like crazy in terms of like getting low to the ground and getting a wide angle shot of this guy grabbing a chair, a chair and stepping over nothing. Like I was, they're like, what is he doing? I'm like, just, just trust me. Like I have an idea. Like, let me just, let me just see it through and see if it works. And then mm-hmm. ended up doing that and it did well. And they're like, Oh, just, just keep doing like that every week. Like we will just let you have like your time <laughs> in addition to the photo shoot. And it's kind of like Connor time. Here you go. Just here's a camera. And like, grab the shot you want and then do your editing stuff and like we trust you so that was kind of cool to see but and trust goes a long way i just can't be more grateful for the amount of trust that i've been given here to just kind of uh test out my creativity and just see it through i guess so i mean Mm -hmm. i definitely think there should be more trust in in established brands with the people actually making the content you know Mm -hmm. yeah i mean like i I think the whole the whole notion of it like your explanation behind doing it for a purpose like I think mm-hmm. I think that's awesome because now well especially within like collegiate athletics this has been something that's come up a couple of times it's like th- m- there's more emphasis on showing player personality and being able to develop a connection between player and fan and player and audience really you know now with like NIL becoming a thing and being like super super implemented into player interaction um, mm-hmm. and how the players go throughout their collegiate career and dealing with themselves they're learning about mm-hmm how to construct themselves or how to, you know, um, not construct, how to, uh, how to like represent themselves and Mm -hmm. treat themselves like a brand to a certain extent. Totally. So like, I feel like maybe this is just, well, this is me looking from the outside in. I'm like, I'm feeling as if players are being a little bit more open to that more interactive. Hey, I want to show you off for this social post. I have this idea. They're like taking that more into consideration because they're looking at ways how they can get their face out there, how they can get mm-hmm. recognition. Um, it may sound selfish, but in actuality, I mean, everyone is looking to make some extra cash, especially when you're in college. Let's be honest. <laughs> for real. Yeah, the NIL has like completely changed everything. I think for the better. Yeah. Like it's just kind of going more to the individual, and I think mm-hmm. the brands like the brands truly recognize like, oh, if we we can actually leverage our brand further by giving power to the individual Mm -hmm. and like basically like leveraging the individual personality as a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's like, it's mutually beneficial in that scenario. Like rather than a brand being faceless and personality less, we can kind of inject some more life back into that by giving more power to the individual athlete Mm -hmm. and they benefit directly from that because of NIL and like the kind of uh, exposure to that. So I think it's great. Mm -hmm. So, from this motion graphic type of creation and like this trend that you own that you created um i guess i used that word trend right when when you were seeing it being implemented more with other team creative kind of what was your reaction was it was it a good reaction or were you kind of like hmm you know <laughs> i, I kind of see what you're saying yeah i don't mean first of all i don't think i created any trend i just kind of I mean, I, everything that I do is inspired from something else. So if anything, I just kind of either exploited it or like meshed it together with something else to 
make it seem like something was created brand new. But I mean, it's stuff that's been done before. Else, like, how would I know kind of how to do it? You know, yeah, that's a good um, way of putting it. And I, like, I don't want to take credit for anything really new under the sun. Like, anything mm-hmm. I put out is not really mine. I'm, we're just all borrowing creativity and inspiration. Like, if anything, I'm I'm flattered that other people would be like using it as inspiration and like honestly like it, it feels good to know that um other people thought what you did was creative and cool to the extent that they would want to go and iterate upon that so mm-hmm. i think that's great like i couldn't be more like pumped for that like good for them you know like i would see projects and try to recreate them and i there's nothing i learned more than trying to recreate a project project that i thought was cool mm-hmm. you know right. and it's just every, everyone's on their own path to get to the point that they can iterate iterate upon like new things you know mm-hmm. right um, so i mean yeah i was i was pumped like good for them like that's great you know yeah yeah i apologize if it like seemed like i was wanting to stir the pot i was just um, oh, no. <laughs> yeah i was just i was just curious how you would like take that because i know some some people um i don't want to say feel insulted but it's more of like you know some people may feel like hey i put all this hard work into it you know like it seeing seeing something i know you probably wouldn't say it deliberately maybe off camera but <laughs> you know if, if you did have that opinion but um yeah i was not trying to get a rise out of you or anything i was just curious how um yeah, seeing, yeah. you know seeing your the way you attack like your emotion composition and the way you are attacking that whole piece of creative you know seeing mm-hmm. that implemented into other teams creative and them taking inspiration from you just curious on your your pov and your um your thought process on that yeah, yeah. i I, I, I apologize point. if i <laughs> i apologize no, no, if I was... no, no need to apologize i think that's a it's a great point to bring up because like i i feel the same as if i put something out that gets like no no interaction versus the same thing that i would post and it gets a lot of attention like just because it gets more attention doesn't mean i'm any more or should be entitled more to like the like how like well respected it was or mm-hmm. like whatever in the field mm-hmm. you know like I, I react the same way toward to what gets attention and what doesn't you know mm-hmm. like i don't i we're just borrowing stuff so you can't really take ownership of, of ideas really i mean you can but like not really in this in this area mm-hmm. we're just taking inspiration we're borrowing creativity from everybody and like making it our own i guess you know yeah but yeah no i don't think it was uh i don't i don't don't feel set up there like whoa whoa. (laughs) yeah well i i looking back on how i asked the question i definitely could have asked it differently but thank you for (laughs) thank you for your response there (laughs) i didn't yeah i do i didn't mean to if if yeah oh that's yeah i I definitely did not mean to potentially put you in a bad spot i apologize if that did um but let's let's kind of let's kind of feed off of what you what you kind of said a little bit like the whole the whole aspect of like us you know, borrowing creative inspiration, you know, I feel like, I feel like design in general, you know, going back to when graphic design officially started, you know, I, there's not really any date, but the graph, the whole aspect of design and composition and mainly like our job is to grab viewers interest and stop them. I think Mallory Heiser put it, put it awesome in her episode. She said, our purpose is to stop the viewer scroll for a little bit, especially if it's going on social, right? Stop the viewer scroll for a little bit and have them be engaged with our brand, right? That's mm-hmm. the main purpose why we design certain things. Mm-hmm. From you know that whole aspect of, of design from starting there, I feel like there's so much that has been done and will continue to be done that doing something completely unique is almost impossible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like... Yeah it's just so much has been already explored like I, 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 that, that's also what i love about what we do it's like there's so much like implementation of several different concepts and several different techniques that you can do and then produce something unique from those you know mm-hmm. yeah it's a very like saturated industry i guess like in corporate terms it would be saturated like reach saturation in terms of medium or creativity mm-hmm. or like ideas right mm-hmm. right i mean and it's something is only saturated if no one like has any creativity on how to push the envelope. And usually when you add like creativity, it also adds effort. So I think, I think we've reached kind of like what a brand is willing to invest in terms of monetarily and like onboard creative minds and give them what they're worth mm-hmm. and like the content that it, they're able to put out. So there's like a threshold there mm-hmm. that like caps how far we can push things. 
Um, but I mean, you can, there's always like things that you can do to like change things up a little bit. I mean, at the end goal, we are trying to like maintain and like press forward a brand. So there's not really a huge, like, I mean, I want to be careful when I say that's not a, like a huge need to like, um, revolutionize anything, I guess, in the space. It's more of, um, like, I think strategy is more important for sure. Like that's, I guess that's the highest leverage of how much a brand can improve and iterate mm -hmm. upon itself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, yeah, the deadly combo is obviously like design strategy and like, um, like the business side of it, like how much investment you're putting into it. Like mm -hmm. those all have to be on the same page to be a totally good rocking, like social experience for the fan base. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, I couldn't agree with, uh, it was Mallory, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That. I, yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. I think getting people to stop and like interact with a brand or just like alter their like their normality, like their sense of normal, like just stop them for a second and be like, oh, that was cool. Mm -hmm. Appreciate, move on or comment, interact or like share with their friends. Like it, it's, it almost gets harder and harder to do that if everyone's trying to one-up each other because it raises the standard of like, all right, what, what, what do you have to do now just to get people to stop, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's definitely difficult, but that's the fun part is the challenge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a very like unique aspect of, um, of design and especially within an industry that's so competitive, like the sports industry. It's like us as creatives are always trying to produce the next and better thing. But sometimes I feel like we just get bogged down in, creating something that looks insane and the, the, the whole aspect of like be, having it be unique and you know something that's never been done before is almost looked at as like more important than than like your fan base and your immediate audience and like the purpose on why you are doing things the way you're doing like mm -hmm. I, I had to sit back a couple times in my previous job um, to where like I had to realize that hey maybe we you know we don't have to be extra creative or super creative to produce something that you know is pushing boundaries we just have to make sure we're communicating to our audience and the people that want to interact with our brand and like they're you know they're getting the information that they need to get they're 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 having a positive reaction to what we're producing you know mm -hmm. to where yeah the emphasis on producing something insane is like you know almost I don't want to I mean obviously you want it to be you know you want it to be professional you want it to um you want it to be produced to a high quality right which comes with being able to develop unique ideas and everything like that right but mm -hmm. yeah I feel like there's just not sometimes there's just not enough not enough um emphasis on who you're marketing to especially when mm -hmm. it comes to producing dollars and you know getting people in your case getting people the games and getting people yeah. interactive with the brand you know I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like what you I may be talking too much but I feel like you what you produced is a good it's a good segue into developing something new within a brand that keeps the brand looking consistent but also mm -hmm. develops a new aspect of interactivity what do you think yeah yeah I think um, I, th I think it's up to the individual like do some soul searching if they feel like they're do just doing the same thing like all you really have to do to get a resurgence in like um fascination and aliveness and alertness with like your passion is just maybe to add a new skill on top of what you already know you know like get to that next level um like if you're a graphic designer and you're kind of like well i'm doing the same stuff every day and it's kind of like boring and i'm like what am i actually doing and you're starting to have like existential thoughts about like your existence <laughs> like maybe all that you would need is like you think it really deep. Adds, <laughs> yeah i know sure we're getting the, the roots of everything like um like add a new skill and like that elevates your graphic design knowledge you i mean you like graphic design is just like color theory composition contrast and like layout and like all of these like you know text and all all of these things that you have to know to be a good graphic designer mm -hmm. there's also a level above that you know like you know motion or video editing or sound design or 3d animation or 3d you know like or ai like all of these things are just like ways to level up if you like combine them mm -hmm. and i think um, maybe it would be a good lesson for people that are kind of stuck on their tracks. Like maybe just take some time and learn a new skill to, to level themselves up and just have a resurgence and like passion for what they're doing, you know? Right. Um, I think that's really important for people to stay passionate and like get themselves out of the, of the rat race of, um, like, all right, we're just like pushing pixels to, to reach our existing demographic and 
um, like I'll just do it again tomorrow and do it the day after that. Like what's, what's exciting? Like what makes you excited? And mm-hmm. the people in the creative industry, what gets them excited is, is being creative. And mm-hmm. the only way you being creative is if you keep adding tools to your tool belt and no matter where you stand in any brand or like hierarchy in any company, there's always ways to improve and to stay fresh and to stay alive, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and like all the AI stuff. I don't want to be like an AI guru or like, (laughs) I mean, we see like enough of that, even though it's fun to mess around with that, that is also another avenue that designers could be like, Oh, maybe, maybe like I can use this to level up my game or at least expedite the creative ideation process. Like Mm -hmm. there's ways to improve that too. So Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's hope if you're stuck. (laughs) (laughs) You hear that people, there's hope if you're stuck. (laughs) Um, One thing I'm very curious about is how you attack different mediums in your work. I see you design for social, you've designed for a TV broadcast, you've designed for um, video board and like in stadium um, type of, presentation um how i guess if you want to like just talk about it like consideration like between the different mediums you can um but i guess like to give you a question to go off of when it comes to i mean maybe we kind of already touched it when we were talking about social media but then let's kind of segue into like more video board side things then Mm -hmm. um obviously like bigger scale right um, when considering readability, um, how people are going to be taking it in, is entertainment a, a main thing that you have to think about? You know, kind of talk about those. For sure, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that you kind of got to like check, check off the list in terms of like legibility, um, like pace, um, like just design. Is it reflecting the brand correctly, or like is it hitting the marks of what they had imagined for that year's campaign of design? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's like it's very a. Uh, the video board package is like that's a whole thing in itself and those that's very strategic and it's a it's a very i mean i like doing video board packages a lot like that's probably one of my favorite things to do just because <laughs> i can like test my like i can apply my like motion expertise to different brands and each brand has their own like swatch palette fonts patterns logos um textures imagery videography like Mm-hmm. stock footage that could go like there's so many variables that can go together to like unleash all this whole realm of creativity in terms of if you funnel it into a motion like time-based graphic design mm-hmm. and i love that like there's nothing that gets me more pumped up than when a client sends over uh, a creative like uh, like a style guide i'm like oh man i can't wait to like <laughs> break this up and see like what i can reveal within it you know and mm-hmm. like like almost extract it in my own like subconscious and creativity um and that that's like and it, it's really like when i feel most in state of flow is when i'm like extracting it from myself and i sit down and i'm like and then i have to like after it's done i just take a step back and it's like i'm like i gotta take a nap for a few days just because it's like <laughs> i just feel like it takes a lot but it's so it's great it's like so much fun i don't i'm probably just derailed the whole conversation but um yeah well, no, I, I don't know i, I, I love like and and applying it to all the different video board dimensions and like creating a system but it's like a every time is a challenge and i I love it it's like super fun so like video boards is video board packages is definitely like something that i found for myself that it's like very fulfilling to do i enjoy it and it's productizable and it like scratches my my business itch and like there's there's a lot of things that kind of come together in that which is why i like doing it a lot and it's Mm -hmm. I love to show other people like here's here's how like how i did it here's like maybe what you can incorporate in your brand and how to like instead of just creating a template and like sending it to all these teams and like oh input your logo here and put your your text here like i want to make it unique for that brand that's the only way i I can differentiate myself is to leverage my creativity and my ability to like exploit these unique characteristics of a brand and build a package around that like Mm-hmm. I love doing that, and I think I, I, you can't you can't take that away from me because I'll, I'll love it every time, and I'll outwork the next person mm-hmm. if they love it as much as me. You know. Mm-hmm. So, like, when when doing a um, package, like, I guess like I have your portfolio up here, um, and it, it looks like you've worked with, well, it looks like Arizona or the D backs you worked with, FC Cincinnati, um, the current. Um, and then you have a bunch of Oregon stuff on here. Um, but I guess like, oh, and, um, 
CFB college football. So that's cool. Um, like, I guess when it comes more like developing the video board packages, like there's more than just developing like a good visual. Like there's a, there's a time and a place for specific things to go up. Um, you know, like, are you designing like only specific type of, like, are you designing just like instant game coverage? Like there's a home run, there's a double, or I guess for Cincinnati in the current, like there's a goal, you know, or there's a corner. Let's like pump up the crowd, you know, those type of things. Like, are you like in the whole scenario designing, designing the whole video board suite, like for promos and for stuff like that? Like, are you diving into that or is it just game action stuff? Um, as, as of now, it's like game graphics packages. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes within those, they have like sponsorship iterations mm -hmm. uh, that they do. Like, I think they call them like engagements mm -hmm. or something like that. They're, there's so many names for all these different things. But <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's one side of the industry for sure is like sp sponsorship graphics, excuse me, like sponsorship graphics where it's just shows like a, a logo and it has like that. I think that's a different realm mm -hmm. and maybe something that I expand into, but um, I just, I, I enjoy doing the, the game graphic packages for sure. Just cause it sticks um, purely to like the brand and the team. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's, I'm always interested in um, I'm always interested in like the, the whole like aspect of, of entertainment within sports. Like obviously on field, that's the main entertainment, like the guys playing on field or, or with or players, I'll use players. Um, the players, like they're the product, they're the immediate product on the field. They have to perform to, enter to entertain, but then also like the secondary and tertiary aspects of, you know, aspects of creative that engages the fans more. That always interests me. Um, I haven't really had a chance to dive into that more like personally when it comes to the work side of things. So I'm always curious when it comes to like you, for example, you delve into that and um, how, I guess when, when you design these things, do they send you videos of like, like if you design like a pump up, like do they send you videos of like your shit going live or, or like, do you have an act, you have like an opportunity to go there and see it all or no? Um, yeah, I usually follow up with and asking them for some like iPhone footage of like the stuff in person. I think that's something I could do a better job of, of maybe just like including a visit in the in the package just so I can go there and document it or just see like how it looks like with my own eyes mm -hmm. in person. Because um, I do want to take that and like show on different like social media as like a vertical like media, like, hey, like this is what I do and here's how I did it. And here's how like mm -hmm. you can do it, I guess like that mm -hmm. whole thing. I love doing that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something I can do. I can do a better job of because sometimes when I ask them for like a few iPhone clips, it's not the best. It's not what I would get. So it's like, I should definitely like do that. But that is a very good point though. Yeah. Cause like, like for your, like the Cincinnati one, for some reason just catches my eye, like suit, like for some reason, but like the main, the like preview animation that's on your portfolio is the goal animation, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you can't really see that until they score a goal and you see the crowd go crazy and your animation is up there. You know, you can't really experience the graph and experience the atmosphere until you, you know, see that and you see that whole, Perfect. yeah. So it's like, I, yeah, I think, I think that'd be a good idea to write in like, Hey, I want to be out there for a game or I want to at least like make it out there so I can see how it looks like in situ, you know? I feel like yeah, you don't you definitely should do that. For um, sure, yeah. Cuz like goal. none of right, these right. like do that. So. <laughs> yeah, you should, <laughs> totally should. Like for Oregon, obviously you've you've you're there, so you're probably yeah. able to see that was stuff. But like I feel like it's just different when it's with a professional organization, you know? They're dealing you're dealing with a much bigger fan base, you know? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> For sure. you feel the electricity in the air. Like, yeah, that would be super sick actually. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, yeah, I, I guess if you like design for like Seattle or something, you know, that'd be a pretty decently trip, like decently quick trip, but like compared yeah. to going all the way across country or halfway across country to KC or to Cincinnati, you know, that'd be kind of, that'd be yeah. kind of crazy just to well, see your stuff, you know, <laughs> maybe you know, I'll, I'll do that for Seattle. Cause I'm doing a, a pack for the storm right now. So, I could definitely pop up there and, and get a few shots of their the activations there. Yeah, that, I think <laughs> I, th I I do think I haven't really dove much into these projects, so maybe you have like mockups in here of actually. Let me dive into one. Um, oh, actually, it's just 
if oh. you go to the, the Diamondbacks one, I do like a. I just found a picture of like that had a layout of the boards. Oh and like, yeah. But you're right. Like I think I do need to do a better job of like showing the environment and capturing like how it reflects an electric environment and how you can like you know branch off of that and mm-hmm. just elevate it you know in both scenarios yeah like, I capture that with the dynamicness of the videos themselves but uh but it's just so like sick when you're there and like you're in the environment i mean sport there's you can't beat a sports environment so mm-hmm. it'd be cool to kind of see those both yeah it's like i mean you have like for the for the d-backs you have like you have like the make make some noise ones you have like the get louder ones um you know like or like you have the win animations like i wonder like how you know if it would make the graphic feel different or make your activation feel different if like the crowd's cheering or like Mm -hmm. if it's a big comeback or something like that you know um Mm -hmm since you are like you are in in the end you're developing something that's enhancing again that entertainment aspect of you know where the audience is so it's like you want to you know you want to produce something that's gonna not saying you didn't but like when you think about producing so, a project like this you want to make sure you're producing something to where it's going to be engaging it's going to be you know mm-hmm. it's going to get people freaking riled up you know and that's yeah you know because they got to support the people on the field you know so it's like yeah it, it's fan experience it's an investment in fan experience or mm-hmm. enhancing that for yeah. sure yeah which i mean how, how would this one even go about like measuring the monetary like addition that you can do like i don't know but it's kind <laughs> of a luxury product you know where it's you don't need this crazy like motion graphic package but i mean i feel like i mean I would appreciate it, but I don't know if that's because I'm just a designer and I do look for that. You know, it's like, it, it's almost like people who are really huge m- music listeners, they understand bad music and good music and almost ruins their experience of mm-hmm. bad music. And there's only a little bit of good music. And with designers, we're cursed by living in this world and seeing all the crappy design out there, but we really appreciate good design, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if the average person can appreciate like the difference between like a very well crafted motion package and just a typical like template Mm -hmm. but i mean in the end i don't really care because i like doing it and i'll i'll want to make a good package every time so Mm -hmm. um it's just what i would like to see so i do it Mm -hmm. you know yeah i feel like i feel like it's like you know like in the summer like when you're at least this is for me like one thing that like always hits different for me like when it comes to like a like a similar type of thing when like you're at a sports game and you're seeing the cool graphics and the moments going crazy. But like if you're in the summer and you're like on a boat or like you're like grilling out and like, there's always a music choice that you go with. There's always like a food choice and a person, you know, you're always with the right people. It's kind of like that whole environment, you know, when like you're at a sports game, you like, it's, it's a, it's a, you're already at a dynamic atmosphere. You want dynamic imagery. You want stuff that's exciting. You want stuff that's like, you know, like you wouldn't go to a rave and listen to Kenny G on a saxophone, yeah. you know? Or would you? Maybe, depending on who you are. But like you, you, you wouldn't. But like you, you wouldn't expect to go to like an EDM or like a dubstep concert and not yeah. see flashing lights and like people going crazy. You know, it's all yeah. about you know, it's all about the atmosphere. Totally. Yeah. The style reflects the experience for sure. For sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, man, I mean, it was awesome having you on and being able to pick your amazingly talented brain um thank you for taking the uh the time out of your day to to join me and uh again i know you thanked me for the flexibility but thank you for the flexibility um and like in in your scheduling and everything and and even thinking about wanting to come on here so um a bunch of appreciation goes out to you goes out to you connor thank you today (laughs) yeah i appreciate it i felt like really short like (laughs) that was fun though i appreciate the conversations i always love hopping on a call and like chat with people are are, where are you right now like location wise i'm in wisconsin okay i don't think i've ever like been out there or will be near there anytime soon but don't pass through like don't feel like you need to (laughs) don't ever go to wisconsin well no it's it's a great thing about wisconsin in the summer at least like yeah wisconsin right now definitely up north is like a is like a thing to to Mm. see it's beautiful up there but like any other time like don't feel like you have to go to milwaukee it's just like every other big city um gotcha. okay but uh I, yeah. I have some cousins that live in milwaukee actually they they love it I mean, you <laughs> got young up there chilling like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah casual um yeah. but for the audience i will say i don't think 
I mentioned, well, we talked about your portfolio a little bit, but for the audience, go down below, check out Connor's stuff. Um, his links will be down there. Um, Twitter for sure, portfolio for sure. Um, so yeah, go down there, interact with Connor um, and look at his amazing work on his portfolio. Um, you will not be, oh boy, excuse me. You will not be disappointed. Um, but anyways, this, is, this has been episode, oh my goodness, what did I say? 80? Episode 80? This has been episode 80. Thank you for coming out and listening today um, on this great, um, I guess for us it's a Tuesday. It was a fun time. Um, thank you for listening today. I really appreciate you guys coming out. And as always, uh, make sure you tell someone that you love them. All right, we will see you in the next episode. Take it easy.